Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Rome Community Theater Radio Channel. Tonight's play is presented to you with the cooperation of Paul Rapp, son of the genius creator of the Bickersons, Philip Rapp. And now, here are Mark and Janet, Hannah as the Bickersons. The Bickersons have retired. It's three o'clock in the morning, and Mrs. Bickerson lies tense and sleepless in the dark as poor husband John, a victim of raucous insomnia or whimper's malady, reaches a climax during an acute attack of his strange ailment. Let's listen. He'll stop now. I know he will. Oh, oh, dear. John! John, turn over on your side. Go on. Stop it! Stop it! Stop it! Huh? What? What is it, Blanche? What's the matter? What's the matter, Blanche? Oh, but, there isn't another woman in the world who'd sacrifice her youth and her looks to live with a man who rattles himself to sleep like a lot of old bones in a bag. What do you think I'm made of, John? Old bones. You've got to stop it. Stop what? That snoring. Oh, it's just your imagination, Blanche. I never snore. John Bickerson, how can you say that? Very easy. Listen, I never snore. I never snore. I never snore. John! Oh, what's the matter? Uh, oh. Why don't you let me sleep, Blanche? <laughs> what about me? What am I to do when you grind away like a buzzsaw? I never sleep at all. You were fast asleep when I came home from my lodge meeting. What time did you get in? I don't know. Put out the lights. You said you'd have one drink and get home at ten. Well, I had ten drinks and got home at one. You knew where I was all the time. Don't start beefing about it now. I didn't know where you were. I would have called. What for? Because the express man came around again with that package. It's from Kentucky and there's freight charges on it. Well, why didn't you pay him? I've been waiting for that package. Well, what is it? It's my dividend. I belong to the Bottle of the Month Club. Oh, I am sick and tired of the way your whole life is wrapped up in a bottle of bourbon. Maybe you'd like me better if I wore a label and put a cork in my mouth. You don't have to wear the label, Blanche. <laughs> there you go, with your subtle insults again. When am I supposed to talk to you? You rush away in the morning and come home in the night when I'm sleeping. Sit up and talk to me, John. Blanche, I'm dead tired. I don't know what time I came home, but I was in the kitchen for over an hour. I know. I heard you puttering in there. I wasn't puttering. You asked me to fix the electric toaster and the curling iron, didn't you? Well, I fixed them both. Do they work? They work fine, except the toast pops up with a permanent. Well, that doesn't surprise me. Did you turn off all the lights? Turned off all the lights. I suppose you left a mess in the kitchen. No mess. Well, I hope you locked the back door. Because that cat got out three times last week. The cat won't get out tonight. Well, where'd you put him? In the birdcage. Birdcage? Where's the canary? In the cat. John Bickerson! Oh, please. Stop knocking yourself out, will you? Nothing happened to the canary, and the cat's fast asleep in the oven. Well, don't scare me like that. Are you sure all the animals are taken care of? I'm sure. Well, how about the fish bowl? Oh. Did you heat up the water for the new baby goldfish? <laughs> uh, I, I heated his water, gave him his pablum, burped him twice, and changed his diaper. Now, would you put out the lights and let me sleep? Why are you so cross and disagreeable all the time, John? Because I'm exhausted. That's not true. You'd rather stay out the whole night carousing with your roughneck friends. Just kills you to spend the night with me. Oh, it doesn't kill me. Well, it's a funny thing that I don't need anybody else. I'm always happy just to be with you. Well, you're in better company than I am. Good night, Blanche. <laughs> 
Keep it up, John. Keep adding insult to injury. Never a kind word or compliment. Just work me to death like a slave. Pick at my meals and complain about my cooking. I never complain about your cooking. Well, then why didn't you eat the pie I made tonight? I did eat it. I ate every bit of it. You didn't like it. I couldn't chew it. The undercrust was like cardboard. Undercrust? Yes. That pie didn't have any undercrust. I gave it to you on a paper plate. Well, the plate tasted better than the pie. Don't make pies anymore. I hate pies. I hate all desserts. Especially that orange meringue broccoli dream cake you make. Don't make me any more desserts. I never know what to make for you. You've got the weirdest appetite of any man alive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure, weird. For two months running, you wouldn't eat anything but pig's knuckles, pig's knuckles, pig's knuckles. What about it? Just because you wanted pig's knuckles, I had to cook my fingers to the bone. Why don't you hire a chef? <sighs> I cook for you, I scrub for you, I sew for you. Do I get any thanks? Thanks. <laughs> thanks. That's all the thanks I get. No love, no affection. How I envy Louise Shaw. Her husband treats her more like a friend than a wife. Settle down, will you, Blanche? No, I won't. You think Louise ever makes breakfast for Mel? <laughs> Not that lazy lump. She makes him go to work every day without a morsel of food. Just a kiss for breakfast. Would you be satisfied with that? Sure. Send her over in the morning. I mean, would you be satisfied if I gave you a kiss for breakfast? Blanche, I'd be satisfied with anything if you'd just let me get some rest. Answer me. Do you want a kiss for breakfast? Yes. Well, ask for it. Blanche, I want a kiss for breakfast. Don't do me any favors. I'll never let you kiss me again as long as I live. Not until you apologize. Apologize? For what? What have I done? It's what you haven't done. You haven't told me you love me for years. Why don't you say you're sorry you married me? Because I'm not. Am I the only wife in the world for you? Well, you're the only wife in the world for me. You're lying. Swear. I swear I'm lying. I mean, I'm not lying. Well, that's no way to swear. Say it nicely. <sighs> you're... The only wife in the world for me. Really, John? Really. I wouldn't have another wife like you for anything. Oh, I wish I'd known more about you before we were married. Oh, you knew everything. I didn't know about that tattoo you have on your stomach. <laughs> That's a real indication to a man's character. I wish I'd known. Oh, wait a minute. I had that tattoo put on my stomach when I was just a silly kid. You ought to be ashamed of yourself. A hula girl with a big dimple in her chin. That dimple was there before she was. Now, don't go digging up my stomach at this time of night. Well, why don't you have that ugly picture removed? Okay, I'll have it removed in the morning. You say it, but you won't do it. Have it done now. What? Go on. Get up and get rid of that hula girl. Are you out of your mind? It's almost four o'clock in the morning. You'd get rid of her quick enough if you were married to Gloria Goosby. Ho, 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 ho. Now, don't start with Gloria Goosby. She'd holler plenty if you didn't do what she liked. I always do what she likes and she never hollers. What? I, I hate the sight of Gloria Goosby. I never want you to mention her name again. Do you hear me? Don't yell at me. I'm sick. Sick? Dr. Hershey told me there's something the matter with my head. You don't mean to say you paid a doctor for that. You make fun if you like, but I know I won't last long. What's the matter with you? Nothing. Are you really sick? So sick I could die. I think I'm poisoned. I've got the most awful indigestion. Call the doctor, John. Uh, you don't need the doctor. I'll take care of it for you. Now, lie still, and I'll fry you some radishes and hot sauerkraut juice. Radishes and hot sauerkraut juice? Finest cure in the world for indigestion. Now, lie still. John Bickerson, I don't want any of your insane remedies. 
you'll treat me for indigestion and I'll probably die of liver trouble. Listen, if I treat you for indigestion, you'll you'll die of indigestion. Now, you want me to help you or not? I'll feel a lot better if you just don't scream at me and tell me you love me. <laughs> I knew you weren't sick. <laughs> tell me you love me, John. I love you. How much do you love me? <laughs> How much do you need? Now, John, Easter Sunday's only two days away, and I haven't got a new hat. What happened to the hat you bought last Easter? It's in a box on the dresser, but that hat's worn out. Well, wear the box. Blanche, you can't be squandering my money on Easter hats. Please, John, just this once. I saw a wonderful hat with a reversible brim that can be turned up or down. How much is it? Sixty dollars. Turn it down. Oh, turn it down, turn it down. I turn everything down because you're always looking for bargains. Well, when you married me, you didn't get any bargain. Oh, how well I know that. Oh, you know what I mean. You only like the kind of woman who would pass up a mink coat to buy a cheap fur. Well, what's wrong with buying a cheap fur? Nothing. Would you like to see the one I bought, dear? What? It's a dyed rabbit choker, and it only costs $94. $94? For a dead rabbit? Now, don't get upset. Blanche! How can you squander my money like that? I deny myself everything. Last week... I had all my teeth pulled out so I could save money on eating. I've been sewing collars on your old bloomers and wearing them for shirts. I haven't even got a pair of pants. Yesterday, I hung a whisk broom from your plaid skirt and went to work dressed as a Scotsman. And she spends $94 on Easter rabbits. All right, all right. I'll take it back. I never knew you could be so mean. Oh, take it back. I wish my poor granddaddy were still alive. He'd never let you treat me like this. <laughs> All of a sudden, she's got a granddaddy. I never heard you mention him before. He was the best friend I ever had. I took his advice on everything. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he could have settled a lot of our problems. I bet he'd tell you to let me keep that choker. How do you know? Because I know. And when I get to heaven, I'm going to ask him. Suppose he isn't in heaven. Then you can ask him. Good night, Blanche. Good night, John. That's our show for tonight, folks. Tune in next time to the Rome Community Theater radio channel when we bring you another episode of The Bakersons. Good night. Good night.